a doll maker based on his wife's image to create a doll. Unexpectedly, the doll also has a soul. And even falls in love with the man. One day, when the wife is found murdered in the red kimono, the blame is put on the doll maker then he is killed by vigilantes. Not content with the fact, the doll sits by her maker's grave for all eternity. In the blink of an eye, 60 years passed. A group of young people arrive at an isolated doll museum after receiving an invitation. The museum's curator introduces them that the various types of dolls on the display shelves are created based on the images of real people. Next, a quiet doll maker here also introduces them to activities related to dolls. After visiting around the museum, the curator takes them to their room to rest. The decoration of the room makes Hamy startled. Through the window, Hamy catches sight of a mysterious girl in a red dress. She waves at the girl, but the girl shyly hides behind the tree. Then, she feels bored so she goes to the gallery to take pictures alone. Suddenly, the doll's eyes widened, Hamy is very surprised. But a few seconds later, the doll returns to normal. At lunchtime, this writer keeps talking to her doll like it's alive. The photographer teases her that, if the doll stays with its owner for too long, it may have a soul. The quiet doll maker in a wheelchair sitting nearby adds that, the dolls with souls will be extremely painful once abandoned. Everyone feels a bit weird after listening to these words, but they don't pay much attention. After that, they gather at the gallery to take pictures. The writer suddenly goes crazy, starts saying nonsense. The scene is extremely chaotic. At that time, no one notices that the doll maker is drawing an odd portrait by their side. During the chaos, the male model sneaks into the curator's office, as if he is looking for something. At this point, the curator suddenly enters the room. He has to hide in the closet. In the midst of tension, a hand suddenly appears in the darkness, slowly places on his shoulder. He turns his head to check, a doll with moving eyes is staring at him. The closet door suddenly opened. The model shyly explains that he just wanted to make a phone call. The curator doesn't believe it, but still lets him leave. The writer finally falls asleep after taking medicine. Hamy finds the writer's doll fell on the ground. She kindly picks it up and puts it on the chair. But after she left, the doll is now on the writer's body. Outside the museum, Hamy meets the red dress girl, learning that her real name is Mina. But very quickly, she can't find Mina anymore. Hamy goes to the doll maker's office and discovers a doll that looks exactly like Mina. She is amazed constantly praising the doll maker's talent. The doll maker asks her if she had met Mina. The reunion scene must have been very touching. Hamy is a bit confused, saying this is the first time she's met Mina. After she left, Mina shows up with teary eyes. Her eyes are full of sadness. Hamy is about to enter the room, suddenly the writer comes and pulls her hair. The writer shouts loudly, asking Hamy why she killed her doll. Heartbroken, the writer sleeps next to her destroyed doll. At this time, the door suddenly opened. She wakes up but doesn't see anything. Just as she's about to lie down, a shape loomed outside the window. However, when she turns around, she finds nothing. She gets out of bed to close the window. The doll's head suddenly rolled down from the bed. The writer hugs the doll tight and burst into tears. At that moment, she doesn't notice that a scary shape is slowly entering the room. At that time, the light keeps flickering. And a doll from the ceiling suddenly fell on her face. Elsewhere, others are still discussing the writer's doll. Then they accidentally discover that they're all compatriots. Hamy is about to return to her room when she finds Mina crying outside. Hamy quickly comes to ask after her. But Mina asks Hamy, why don't you remember me? There's blood all over her hands. After that, she runs into the woods in tears. Hamy chases after her, unexpectedly she slips and falls, fainting on the spot. The high school girl brings dinner to the writer. She knocks on the door for a long time, but no one answers. She really wants to go to the toilet, so she opens the door. As a result, the scene before her eyes scared her to the point of falling down. In the room, the writer is found hanged. This death scene is so scary, panic arises in the group. The curator tells everyone that he has called the police. But the high school girl really can't take it anymore. Asking the photographer to take her to the toilet. Unexpectedly, she is scared by the things inside. Behind the toilet seats in each room, there are devil dolls hanging. Since she can't stand it anymore, she risks everything to go inside. After that, she can't hear the photographer's voice anymore. She immediately gets into a panic. She is even more scared after seeing the doll's face behind her through the mirror. Turns out it's just a prank of the photographer. When she is about to go out, suddenly a hand grabs her. The photographer finds that the girl hasn't done yet. So he puts his camera inside and takes a picture. Meanwhile, the girl is struggling madly. After hearing a crack, the photographer sees blood flowing to the floor from the toilet. He finally feels the danger. He musters up all his courage and opens the door. Then finds the girl with two broken legs,
tragically dead inside. He shouts in panic. He picks up the photo he took earlier. He immediately runs out after looking at it, then drives away, but the doll doesn't spare him. When the model catches up, the photographer died. Only now does Hamie wake up in the woods. She returns to the museum and calls her mother to ask about the doll. Indeed, when she was young, she had a doll, and its name is Mina. The doll she threw away when she was a child turned into a person, and came to find her. Hamie is extremely scared, she quickly packs up her luggage to escape. But she carelessly drops the car key under the cabinet. While she is trying to get the key, the model appears and presses her against the wall. The model now reveals himself to be a police officer. There've been a lot of murders at the museum lately. So he came to investigate. He found the photo in the toilet. Immediately thought that Hamie is the killer, so he handcuffs her. At that time, the doll maker appears and asks the model to look at the photo again. This time, Hamie in the photo turned into Mina. The maker suddenly says indignantly, 60 years ago, there was a man who was slandered to death like that. No one trusted him, except for the doll he had made. The doll promised to avenge her maker. Right after that, the doll met a couple of doll makers. The doll immediately possessed the wife, and asked the husband to make a doll based on her dead master. But he refused, so he was chained in the basement. The current curator is actually the wife's younger brother. Because he wants his sister to recover. He found all kinds of ways to invite the descendants of the murderers, who killed the doll maker that year. They were all invited to this museum. As for the model, his grandfather is the real killer who killed the woman in the red kimono. The doll maker tells them the truth with all cruel words, then leaves. The model wants to unlock the handcuffs for Hamie. But he discovers that the key had been dropped in the room. He gives the gun to Hamie and goes to find the key alone. Now, Mina comes and comforts Hamie not to be afraid. Because the doll maker agreed with her. As long as she kills the other guests, Hamie will be safe. But Hamie decides to shoot Mina. When the model just got the key. Suddenly there's a steel wire rope tied around his neck, hanging him up in the middle of the hall. Hamie uses soap, tries to bear the pain to get out of the handcuffs. Then she finds Mina wanting to kill the model. She runs upstairs to destroy Mina's soul. Mina immediately appears, she can't believe that Hamie could heartlessly kill her. In order to save Hamie, her hands were bloodstained. Extremely disappointed, Mina turns into a devil. She rushes downstairs and directly kills the model. Then strangles Hamie. She suddenly sees Hamie's scar. Recalling the childhood incident when Hamie protected her. She stops her murder attempt and returns to normal. However, at that moment, the doll maker appears, wanting to kill Hamie. Mina stands in front to protect Hamie. The doll maker destroys Mina's soul with a knife. Mina immediately disappeared. Hamie is so scared that she can't move. She can only watch the doll maker getting closer. In a critical moment, the chained man escapes from the basement and shoots the doll maker. The curator comes and sees his sister lying in a pool of blood, immediately struggling with the chained man. After a while he is also slashed to death. In the end, Hamie and the man burn the dolls. She also throws the rest of Mina's doll into the fire. She doesn't know who's wrong after all. Is it because of irresponsible people, or because of persistent dolls?